Hi guys, it's Machine Dana. Welcome to the video. I hope you're doing really, really well. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can add masks to your webcam overlays, your scenes, and also to other various sources. I'm going to give you some inspiration on how you can use them best to interchange within your stream. What are masks? Well, masks are things like this, adding circles to your webcam, uh, or maybe like you can add portrait modes to your webcam as well. I can like literally Or you can get a little bit more wacky with it as well, um, because, you know, you're such a star. Or you can go really nuts with it and do something really weird, like add your logo into it. <laughs> you can also go so far with this. So the world is your oyster with the overlays, and you don't just have to apply them to webcams. You can apply them to different scenes and sources as well. I'll go into a little bit of detail about how you can get the best from those as well, including information about how you can nest the different scenes and almost like reprogram your scenes and sources so that you're not having to duplicate workloads as well. I've been using masks for about a month now and it really helped improve my confidence in the way that I use my own scene changes, zooms and various other things like that. I think my viewers really like it and it definitely gives a good first impression to anyone new to the stream. And I think the reason why is probably only one or two percent of streamers on Twitch or YouTube gaming really use these masks in any real proper way at the moment. So it's definitely a way of standing out. I help people to level up their streams. So feel free to subscribe to me and you'll get a lot more video content from me. I've done about 100 videos or so currently and I'm always adding to them weekly. Feel free to like the video as well. It definitely improves the visibility of this video. By all means, check my Discord out in the link in the description or daily at twitch.tv forward slash machine Dana. So just to give you a little flavor of how I use these on my stream, I've got a number of different sources and I use transitions between certain scenes like this. I'll link a video in the description about how you can set up connections to make those motion transitions because they're really, really nice and they go very well in conjunction with zooms like this which allow you to then focus in and zoom in with like a circular mask around it or something along those lines. So, and I've got the same thing, just a little bit more of a dynamic set of scenes and sources that I can use when I'm doing different games and obviously you don't want to be blocking certain content that's actually in the game or on the screen. But the first thing that's really really important to sort of bank in your brain a little bit, I don't know why I'm slapping myself on the face when I say that, but you can add masks to a scene and also to a source. And that's really, really important because if you're adding multiple sources to your stream, if you add a mask to a source and that same source is duplicated elsewhere, that mask will apply everywhere. Whereas if you apply the mask to a scene, which contains a source, then it's the scene itself that has the mask and the source still remains clean, as it were. I don't know why I keep smacking my microphone. <laughs> And this is how you're able to create situations where you can have the same source that looks very different but on the same screen or the same source across multiple screens and transition to those without having to turn sources off. Now we get back to the main screen because I want to illustrate exactly how you can add this on a really basic, basic example, which is just simply adding it onto an overlay of your webcam. Now, if you think of your webcam as a source, that's got a container that it operates within and you can resize that container. But you can also set up that source as an actual scene as well. And that's really important because if you've got one source that is not adjusted in any way, but you make the adjustment over the scene, it means that that source is essentially still clean. So that source can be used in other scenes in different ways. And I'll show you a good example of how that takes effect. So I have here a uncropped version of my cam, which is a Sony A5100. It's a 16 by nine scene and it's 1920. Uh, by 1080p. I've added that scene and I've added the filter that I want to apply to that in terms of the LUT to that. So this is set up exactly how I want it, but I really want to be using that camera in a number of different capacities. So really I've set it up as one source that will remain as clean as it is, and then I can just apply it in loads of different areas as scenes. And that's the best way to set up your stream. I'll do a more detailed video about this, but for the purposes of this video, it is quite important. So this is the actual scene called Sony 1690 scene, and it's got one single source in it, which is the camera source. And I've just added a filter onto that camera source just to slightly adjust the coloring. But I've also added here a mask to this particular one, so all I've done is add the Sony scene that I've just created, the uncropped scene, by clicking on the plus icon here and clicking on scene and selecting add source and adding the, the uncropped camera as a scene and add source. And what that means is I've got a 
completely fresh scene that can be used and I can now adjust this scene within the scene. It's kind of a little bit like Inception at this point. You're not adjusting the actual source, original source. You're adjusting a scene of the source, if that makes sense. And I'll just show you exactly why that's important. On my stream, I was able to apply a simple effect that was like a simple zoom effect because I've cropped out the border of this camera. So here is my just chatting screen and that uses the uncropped version of the camera. But on top of the camera, I've got another version, which is the cropped version that I've pulled to zoom in. So that's why you've got here both the uncropped and the zoom cropped. So in my source lists, I've got both the uncropped version of the scene and the cropped version of the scene. So I can interchange between those two scenes, both of which have the source in its original state. They're just being adjusted within the scenes. So I've also then programmed that into my stream deck, which allows me to press a button to quickly zoom like that into the cropped version that I've been able to stretch to zoom and then zoom out. So that's just a quick thing that you can do and a quick effect. And I've used the mask to enable that, but it's the, the key to allowing that to happen is that I've not adjusted the camera setting in its original state. I've adjusted it within a scene, if that makes sense. So first, let's talk a little bit about what masks actually are. Those of you that have got any experience with Photoshop or similar programs like that, or, or even video editing, will know that masks essentially operate as like a filter that allows content to be shown or disallows content to be shown. And the way it works, anything that is black will completely black out the content. And if it's white, it will completely allow the content to be seen through. And the analogy here I use, if you've got like a photograph, let's say this is a photograph. And if you have a black piece of paper and you cut a circle in the middle of that black piece of paper, if you overlay that black piece of paper on the photograph, the cutout in the middle, which we'll say is the white, will be see-through. You can see the photo behind it. But the black area, you won't be able to see the photo behind it. The photo behind it still exists. And with these masks, the video behind it does still exist. You're not cutting out the seat. You're just choosing not to show it, but you're masking it out exactly like a normal mask would work. So even if you don't have experience with Photoshop, if you think of it in terms of blacking out content or allowing content to be seen through with the white, it becomes a little bit more easy to understand. So now I'm gonna show you how you can add this to both a scene itself, literally a full scene, or to an individual source. It's the same way for both methods. So to add it to a scene, we want to select the scene that we're going into. We want to right click and go onto filters. We can add all kinds of different filters to this. And there's a really a long list of filters you can add, like scaling, aspect ratio, LUTs, and all sorts of things like that. Chroma key, people that have got green screens will be familiar with that. You don't just have to add it to a source, you can add it to the scene itself. We're gonna select image, mask, and blend. We can give it a name if we want, for example, circle. Now at this point, we wanna make sure that the alpha mask color channel is selected. And we're gonna now browse to an image. Now, all you've gotta do with these is to create an image that is black and white. The white reveals what you want to be shown on screen and the black literally masks out what you don't want to be shown on screen. And that's whether that's on a webcam or on the whole scene itself. I've got a number of different ones here and I will link in the description a load of different masks. So if you've not got Photoshop or you're not really too competent in Microsoft Paint or whatever, you can just take the downloads from the link in the description. But you'll see in there in the download a portrait, a cropped rectangle, a circle, a star. There's a machine day and a logo there as well. <laughs> but I've also masked out, you can see here, I've actually masked out some of my labels for my webcam for my YouTube videos. That just allows me, and it's a really good application of this, when I'm making YouTube videos, I can just mask out my stream labels rather than having to have two completely different scenes. Let's talk a little bit about the canvas size versus the mask size. If we take the photograph analogy that I mentioned earlier, if the piece of black paper that you're putting over the photo is much smaller than the photo, you're still gonna show all of the outside uh, when you put that cropped circular piece of paper within photo. And the same applies with video masking as well. What you want to be doing is matching the mask size with the area that you're trying to mask. Then you can just edit the mask knowing that you've got the full coverage. So for instance, if you're streaming in 1920 by 1080 p your mask should also be 1920 by 1080 p And these images are literally just black on white. The other thing to note is you can have grayscaling as well. Grayscaling will let some of the content through and it'll create like an opaque effect, but you can also adjust the opacity in the source here as well. If I just select the circle mask, which is a 1920 by 1080, that's now applied that circular mask over the scene itself. 
I can now make an adjustment to the white, how op opaque I want that white to allow. So as you can see, the scene itself has got a mask over the top of it, which unfortunately means you can't see me. So I'm going to remove it now. <laughs> To remove it, you simply click into the filter and click that there'll be a minus button here. Just to illustrate how this works in Photoshop, I've got the different layers here. The black background at the bottom is the area that's going to mask over things. And then I've got a number of different, I've used paths here, shapes and paths. And I've just created the white shape and then saved it as a PNG. It's really important that when you save this, we save as uh, and we select PNG because PNGs allow transparencies. JPEG does not allow transparency. That's really important. But you don't have to be a Photoshop expert to enable this to happen. You can literally just do it in Paint. So now to add a mask over a specific source, what we can do here is I can just go to my camera here. You simply click on the source, right click the source, click on filters, and the same process applies. You click plus icon, give the mask a name. You want to select mask or blend. Click OK, make sure that the alpha channel is selected and then we browse for the mask that we want to apply for the source instead of the scene, in this case, a rectangle. <laughs> and once again, to remove it, click into filters and just press the minus button there. So hopefully I've given you a really good feel for how you can use masks on your stream. There's a lot to it, even though it's very simple in its nature, the way you apply this to your stream can get quite complicated, particularly if you work with a lot of different scene changes and transitions, as I do on mine. But a lot of this is just a learning process. If you've got any questions at all, feel free to jump into my Discord, the link below. Slide into my DMs, give me a shout. <laughs> uh, once again, if you found it useful, please thumbs up the video. Feel free to subscribe and guys, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Take care.